Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Simon Rose. I'm an author of fiction and non-fiction books, and I'm here, uh, well, very pleased today to be part of I Read Canadian Day. I've been writing for quite some time now. It seems uh, about oh, 20 years or more, I think. In terms of non-fiction books, um, I have written probably ooh, I, I, more than 100. I think it's about 122 or something like that. I, I, I do lose, lose track because I seem to do about um, oh, five or six or sometimes more, sometimes about 12 of those in, in a year. So it, it, it does keep me sort of uh, busy with things like that. Um, some of these, uh, well, a lot of these in recent years have been... Um, uh, with uh, Beach Street Books, who I've uh, been very happy to work with, wonderful company to work with on uh, on nonfiction books on a wide variety of topics. I think about some of the ones that I've done, and I'm looking at my notes here for this because there's been so many. Um, there's been books about uh, animals, uh, famous people, uh, Canadian and U.S. government systems, uh, history, uh, warfare, nature, uh, the military, uh, famous buildings. Uh, the human body and how it works, star constellations, the environment. I mean, there's been there's been so many, really. Um, now, I, I've got some of them here, actually, that I can show covers of here. I mean, this one is, uh, let's see now, I did mention government systems. I mean, this one here uh, was all about Canada's political parties. This is, this, was, this is quite new, I think. This was last year. Uh, this is Canada's political parties, which was done, uh, say, recently. And that was in the same series as this one here, which was about the responsibilities of citizenship, which, again, was quite a recent one. Uh, that were all very interesting to write. There were ones I did recently for Beach Street as well. I'm not going to show you all of them again, but these were all about um, healthy kids. Uh, these were for a slightly younger audience. This was about embracing differences. Uh, and this one here about personal safety. And then also, not only these topics, I've also done ones like um, these here were for, for a younger audience on different uh, celebrations in Canada. This one was all about Canada Day. Um, Halloween, very scary to write, of course, that one. And then, of course, this one, which we've all just uh, just been dealing with, Christmas. So there's been an awful lot. I mean, I, I'm not going to show you every single nonfiction book that I've uh, I've written over the years, because there have been, as I say, quite um, uh, quite quite a few. Now, these uh, kinds of books, uh, they do tend to answer questions related to the five W's. Uh, although there's five W's and an H, I suppose, as well, because there's uh, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, and these really are questions that are, are, are very good for these books to address, because these sort of questions cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. You've got to actually have more information. So these are, they're great for kids for learning and everything. So, for example, uh, who invented the car? Uh, what is the world's uh, tallest building? Uh, when did people first start wearing shoes? Very interesting. I, I, actually, I don't actually know that. So that. Maybe I should read one of these books and find out. Uh, where are the most powerful volca uh, volcanoes in the world? Why does the sun look red or orange when it rises and sets? Now, I think I know the answer to that, but I would have to research it to, to, to make sure. I think I, I knew that once. And also an interesting one too, how do fish live in very cold water? That's very interesting, isn't it? How do they do that? And these cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. And these kinds of books answer those questions for, uh, uh, for young readers, or in fact, anybody who's reading them really. Now, there's a writing process with these, I suppose, for, for me and probably for other people. I can only speak for myself here, but uh, uh, most of the publishers I've worked with for, for nonfiction books have some sort of a, um, uh, what they call a template, uh, which is more or less a plan uh, for, for, for the topic, for, for whatever's in the, uh, in the book. Uh, often this is based on other books in, in a series, like the ones I showed you about um, Canadian celebrations, for example, about Christmas and Halloween and Canada Day and things. Uh, there were there are other books in the series as well, uh, and uh, and 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 Beach Street have done these kinds of books before, uh, I guess, and so they have an idea of what they'd like to see in the book and and what sort of order they are in and everything like that. Um, if the publisher doesn't send a plan, and sometimes they don't, they might ask me to uh, create one. Uh, for a book from from scratch, more or less, uh, but sometimes there's some sort of a guideline. They, they, they it would include um, 
the different sections that they'd like to have in the book, uh, how many boxes there need to be with uh, little interesting facts in them, uh, even how much information should be in each section. Um, uh, because something sometimes there's there's a certain aspect of the topic that the publisher wants to focus on uh, more than the others. If it's a book about an animal, for example, uh, but uh, but but the focus of the book is supposed to be on how the species is endangered, what is threatening the animal, are there ways to make things better, and so on, rather than it being just a book about. Um, what the animals like, uh, what sort of life it has, its habits and what it eats and things like that. It's mostly focusing on the environmental damage that's causing a, a danger to this this creature and if it, it could be driven to extinction, that kind of thing. Um, even if there's no plan at all, which has happened sometimes with some publishers, they, they've said, well, uh, we'd like to, you to write a book on this particular topic. I have usually, well, not usually, I always do. I would always make a plan myself, even if it's just handwritten on, on, on paper. I would make a, uh, a plan just to keep me on track and, and keep me... Um, uh, keep me organized. Uh, the outlines, of course, are sometimes they're similar for books in the same series, uh, but they're not that they obviously vary uh, depending on the type of book uh, that I am actually um, uh, actually doing. Uh, the good thing about having a plan, whether it's from the publisher or from myself, is that you don't necessarily have to write uh, the book in order. Now, that might sound a bit confusing. Uh, but there are always going to be some sections of the book that can be completed quicker than others and some that you might find more interesting. And there are always going to be parts of the book that you're not as interested in and that might be a bit more of a chore to finish. And if you just, and if that's if, if a section like that is the third thing you have to write and then you get to that, you may, may be stalled in the writing process. So just skip over that and write another bit and then go back to that. In terms of content for these kinds of books, uh, if you've got a book, say, about an animal, let's say an elephant or something, uh, you would have sections in the book on where the animal lives, what they eat, uh, how they care for their young, the environment in which they live, if they have any uh, enemies, if they're endangered, and, and maybe what the future holds as well. And a similar sort of plan and everything would be followed for another animal, more or less. It makes it easier to write if, it, if it's all, if you've got some sort of an idea of what you're supposed to be doing. Books about uh, wars, which I seem to have done quite a few of those over the years, there would normally be um, a section on uh, how the war began, the two sides that were involved, uh, the sort of background and everything. Uh, there would always be sections on uniforms, equipment, uh, the weapons. There would be biographies of the commanders. There would always be a section on the battle itself or several battles. Uh, sometimes maybe three or four in the same book uh, with maps and charts and everything showing how the battle was fought. There would always be figures and statistics on the number of people involved and casualties and things. With the books I've done on World War One and Two, there would always be sections on the war at home, uh, what it was like for people who are left behind when, when all the men went off to fight uh, uh, in the war itself. Uh, say in World War II, it would be about the effects of, uh, of uh, food shortages and rationing and uh, aerial bombing and children being evacuated into the countryside away from the cities and all, all manner of things like that. Uh, how the war ended, of course, is always important to put in there. And also what happened next in terms of the World War II books, you're looking at uh, you know, the foundation of the United Nations and what happened after, after the war ended and everything. Uh, sometimes with different books, I'll be asked to create small quizzes, uh, just short quizzes, sometimes 10 questions, something like that, usually based uh, on the information that the that readers will have already um, seen earlier in the book. Um, there's sometimes going to be fact boxes as well, some interesting fact that appears on a particular page about some, some, something that uh, is, is very interesting. So these are the kinds of things. Now, every book's different, but uh, you know, th these are the sort of things that you might see in a non-fiction book. Uh, I have enjoyed the ones that have been about, um, I do have a degree in history, so the history ones I've, I've liked uh, doing, and that is sort of uh, as, as a, a linked to uh, books about uh, political systems, about, you know, about how the government works and things. So there's always elements of history with that and with the indigenous ones, too. I mean, those have been fascinating to do, really, uh, the books on indigenous peoples and cultures, because you, you do some of this, some of it you may be familiar with, but an awful lot of it is, is new information. And, it, and it's, uh, it's, all, it's, it's such an interesting.
interesting thing to read about and research about. And I've been very uh, uh, pleased to have been involved with those book series over the years. Uh, I've also enjoyed the ones about science um, and about uh, like the ones about the human body or about natural disasters that I've done and, and all sorts of things, really. So there's been quite a few, really. So it does depend um, on the nature of the book. Sometimes, as I say, I get them done very quickly and sometimes it takes uh, takes a little bit longer. Uh, really, there isn't a typical deadline for these things, really. It depends really when the publisher needs them and when they send me the uh, information sometimes. Um, uh, but it's not months. I mean, sometimes it's, it's, it's just a few weeks to complete one of these uh, one of these books. Or sometimes with the with the shorter ones, sometimes you might be completing a couple of these books in a week uh, in the same week. So um, and obviously it will depend on how many uh, other jobs you've got happening as well and, and, and what else is going on in your life, I suppose. But um, no typical deadline. But uh, normally for these kind of books, the deadlines are, are in, uh, measured in weeks rather than in uh, 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 in months. Now, research, of course, is something that is very, very important to this uh, this process. Um, the research is, is is a big part of writing these books, and uh, most of this is done um, online. I mean, when I first started researching for my uh, novels and things, and even I suppose really for some of the nonfiction ones years ago, I might have used books, um, uh, uh, physical books at one point, but the vast majority of it is uh, is online. For most topics, uh, there are plenty of websites that you can consult. Um, there's there's some uh, there's some wonderful ones on things on historical topics and on famous people uh, from from if, if it's quite a while ago and science and medicine. I mean, there's some very reliable uh, sites. Uh, there are ones like uh, the uh, Canadian Encyclopedia is 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 a, is a wonderful site for well for most things Canadian, but not just Canadian things for everything else as well. And the Encyclopedia Britannica is another one as well, which you, which is online. Um, and you, you tend to find that most of these, uh, it, it, I never, you don't, you don't just rely on one source, of course. I usually go to three or four, maybe, depending, sometimes more than that. Um, you do tend to find that the, the facts are, sometimes you'll find an extra fact that you hadn't seen on another side, but most of them agree. There are some, a certain number of websites which I located a long time ago and I'll still go back to, and I can't remember the name of them right now, but sometimes these are sites that are um, uh, simplified, I suppose. If, you, if you're writing a book about human body systems, that can be very, very complicated with very uh, complex uh, information. And sometimes you, you need to know how, how do I break this down so that you know uh, uh, people of, who are maybe 10 or 11 years old can understand. But there are some sites that are like that, even for history as well. You can find those um, uh, websites where things are a bit more uh, mentioned, that they're, they're talked about in, a, in a, a bit more of a simple language and things. So there's those as well. So um, the sources are always listed at the end of the book uh, that I, uh, when I send the information to the publisher, all the sources that I've used because they need to uh, check over those and, and make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, using those reliable sources, then everything is, uh, is correct. Um, these are sometimes li links to websites uh, or they can be linked to online versions of books. Sometimes they're even uh, links to videos on YouTube and other places as well if I've, if I've consulted a video uh, about something. Uh, and this all helps the publisher to uh, to to know that I've uh, or to determine that I've done all the, got all the right information and everything. And the publisher can also check uh, the facts and figures that I've included in the book as well, if 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 they if they'd like to do that. In terms of um, glossaries, now a glossary, of course, is something that appears at the end. Uh, of the book as a rule. This is just like a, 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 a list, not every important word that appears in the book, but some of them, um, especially if it's scientific or if it's about, uh, I wrote some books about earthquakes and, and tsunamis uh, for a publisher uh, a couple of years ago, I think. And there were some very big words in there, some very complex words. And they, they yes, they were explained a little bit in the text, uh, but in the glossary at the back, you can put an explanation in uh, for the readers if they think, oh, I wonder what that word means in, in more detail. Oh, I want to know more about that word. It's there at the glossary uh, uh, at the back. So there's uh, not every not every book has a glossary, but that that just mostly is down to what the publisher would like uh, in the book. Not 
every time, but I might work with um, consultants uh, that are hired by the publisher uh, on certain um, topics. Uh, the indigenous uh, peoples and cultures books, I've always, there's always been consultants involved with those uh, who are going to be looking into my, uh, things that I've written and maybe adding some interesting things of their own. Um, also, consultants are involved with their books uh, on uh, very complex scientific topics. Uh, the, the human body thing again with the with the uh, with some medical experts, and also sometimes historians and military experts, uh, mostly for things uh, mostly for things that um, uh, like weaponry, really. I suppose that that kind of thing that uh, that you that you can certainly find information online about a certain type of gun that was used in a war, but. Um, a consultant will help you make sure that the information that you're putting in the book is 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 correct. I don't have any say in the um, uh, other stuff that goes into the books. I'm usually just uh, writing the text and everything. The publisher will usually choose uh, photographs, uh, maps, graphs, charts, and all that sort of thing. Um, Sometimes I've been asked for suggestions, uh, uh, depending on the publisher, not very often, sometimes I have. Um, sometimes I've been asked to do the captions that appear at the bottom of the photographs, but again, not too often. The publisher takes care of all that, and I've never had any complaints about the pictures that have been used in the, uh, in the books that I've, um, I, I've written. So um, uh, fortunate in that sense. Sure, there's an awful lot of things that I have uh, I have missed here. Um, I do have a uh, a website at uh, simon-rose.com. If anyone's interested in finding out about more about me and my work, uh, all my books are on there, including every nonfiction book I've I've written is on the website um, with further information about it and everything, as well as I say about all the um, uh, the novels I've written and all the different services I provide for the writers and, and things like that. And a little bit about me as a person as well. So, and of course I'm on, like most people, I'm on social media and everything as well. So uh, if anyone would like to connect with me and uh, on there and learn more there, they're very welcome to do so. So, um, Thank you very much for listening today. I uh, hope, uh, hope this has been illuminating uh, all about the uh, wonderful world of uh, non-fiction books. Thank you. <laughs>